What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jacob Potato, and you are watching me play Gears of War Judgment on Overrun. I think the game type's called Overrun. And the game is pretty much Horde, but with a twist. Back in Gears of War 2, Horde was introduced. What happened was you had to stop the Locusts from killing you, but in this one, one team plays as the Locusts, and one team plays as the Cogs. It kind of works the same as Rush from Bad Company in Battlefield 3, whereas the Locusts are trying to attack the hole, the emergence hole there, and they're trying to destroy that, and then when that gets destroyed, the next round happens, and you move up the map a bit. So the map's constantly changing, the game type's constantly changing, so you have to change your tactics and change whatever. As you can see, I am playing as Cool, the Cool Train legend with some of the most recognizable one-liners from gaming like ever he's the engineer in this game there's four classes there's the scout the engineer the soldier and then there's the medic calls the engineer so he has the lancer and he also has the bushka on his back which is like a grenade launcher and he also is able to throw down I want to say ammo boxes which would be right I've really started to get into Gears of War Judgment I think now after playing so long with uh, Infected Gamer and also just by myself every now and again I've really got the hang of it and it's a lot of fun I'm enjoying it there's a lot of different aspects about it that keep me coming back for more even though when I'm dying constantly in a game and just thinking you know I could be doing better I could be doing something different than this that can help my team but with Gears of War there's something just about the gameplay with it that even though you're dying all the time you just want to do better and you just want to get the kill on somebody because when you kill somebody in this game it is really satisfying you know they just kind of go everywhere <laughs> Gears of War has always been a violent game, really, but it's just one of them satisfying games at the at the same time. It's kind of weird. Speaking of violent games, have you ever considered, especially for you Christian commentators out there, that what we do is wrong? Is us spending time talking about games and talking about God really what we should be doing? I know with my side of things that my mother is really avant that I don't play violent games. She's kind of avant that I don't play games at all because a lot of the time she believes that they're just a waste of time. Yes, in an aspect, the playing games can be a waste of time if I sit and play it for too long. I know that on a Sunday I could sit and play games all day, but a lot of the time I'm trying to get videos for the rest of the week. And especially now since I'm playing more games that I'm no good at, especially Gears of War and Tomb Raider and Battlefield 3, I'm really not any use at the end games. So trying to get a good gameplay for you guys to watch is really difficult. So then because I'm trying to get better at playing these games, I have to play them more often. It's not like Call of Duty where 9 times out of 10 you can pick up the controller, jump into a game and you can get a couple of good games from maybe an hour playing. You know, that would do me the week. But with Gears of War and Tomb Raider and Battlefield it's a lot harder because the mechanics are so different and I'm not used to playing them. So then I have to play them more. So then my mother is constantly getting at me for about playing violent video games so much. It's, there's a lot of different aspects about it but the main part of it is I know with Gears of War it's extremely violent when you shoot somebody their head could explode or their body could explode. When you shoot somebody with a torque bow they explode. Just a lot of exploding people in that game and like explosion man. But what I'm doing can it really be justified by the fact that I'm making these commentaries for people that maybe don't get to go to church every week or don't go to church at all. I'm trying to be a type of commentator that people want to relate to that is a good role model but also is able to talk about God and Jesus and then things and give those people that type of experience. But then can I really say what I'm doing is right when there's killing and whatnot going on in the background? It's kind of a it's kind of a question that's been delving on my mind at the minute. Me and my girlfriend talked about it for about an hour last night over dinner and a lot of time I was just kind of wondering is what she's saying right? Should I be playing violent video games that condone killing and shooting and murdering and whatnot, or is it okay when at the end of the day I'm trying to relay a message and this is probably the best way to do it? With my Aunt Emily dying over the weekend I kind of I kind of wondered now am I making the most of my time? Is this something that I should be spending so much time on playing video games? I know for a lot of the fact that I don't really see a difference in playing video games compared to watching TV or sitting on the computer or on the internet and watching YouTube videos all day. You know, at least with a video game you're doing something, you're learning something about that game which makes it more fun later on in time. But I do realise that if I had spent as much time playing my piano as I do video games, I'd be a lot better at piano. I don't really know what to think about it anymore. A lot of my games like Tales of Vesperia and Nino Kune are games that I play because they're a good story. 
Bioshock Infinite had a brilliant story. It was overly violent, yes, I don't see the point why it was so violent. The story behind that game was just fantastic, I enjoyed every minute of it. I haven't even touched the stories of Tomb Raider or Gears of War yet, I just play the online which is just more murdering and killing. When confronted about this topic last night, I told my mother that I play video games because they help me de-stress. You know, I enjoy them so therefore I can just sit back and enjoy them and just chill out. But then on the other side of it, video games can actually cause a lot more stress. But that's not really here or there. The kind of the point is, I play video games now, I make these videos because I want to be a commentator, but I also want to be a Christian commentator. And that's how I condone playing violent video games. Because as a Christian commentator, it's difficult because people don't want to watch your videos because, you know, they hear that you're a Christian. So immediately there is that thought process in the back of their head that's saying, oh, these guys are going to judge me. I don't want to really listen to them. So therefore you have have to play the games and you have to get into the environment where people will sit down and watch your videos and actually then hear the commentary and then think, oh, this guy's actually talking some sense. I don't say violent video games are good. A lot of them are just now violent for the sake of being violent. People want realistic shooters. They want to be able to beat people. So I don't really understand why games have to be so violent to be able to beat people in a game. It's kind of strange. My girlfriend said just, why don't you play chess? Why don't you just sit down and play chess if you want to play a game where you're able to outwit somebody? and beat people, why don't you just play chess? And I honestly didn't have an answer for it. There's something about video games that just make you come back more and more to them, I think. I don't really know what it is. Why is it that you play violent video games? Why is it that Call of Duty is a much better game than, say, Ni no Kune or Need for Speed or FIFA? What makes, like, a violent video game better in your eyes compared to a non-violent video game? Thanks for listening to this commentary, guys. It's just kind of a bit of random ramblings. You may have noticed on my avatar on my YouTube channel that I have a new guy. I made him myself. He's like Jagged Potato 2.0. Hopefully I will be able to have the full guy, like the full screen at the start of the next video just to let you all see him in better detail. But as always guys, until Thursday, hopefully, as long as nothing else goes wrong this week. If you liked the video, click the like button down below. If you want to subscribe to my channel, click on the little Jagged Potato guy at the top there on the video saying subscribe. I'm going to put a little circle around him, hopefully. <laughs> my name is Jagged Potato, I am a Christian, and I will see you all next time.